Okay, today, uh, we're going to continue on with some of the notes that I started yesterday. I didn't get really far in depth in them. I want to kind of talk about a couple things uh, with that. Uh, so the first thing let's do, um, we're, we're in the new section 4.6. I want to review the isosceles triangle. So um, we're actually, uh, what I want to talk about first is the actual like vocab terms. In fact, I'm going to just hit the lights here. Okay. Um, I want to talk about the vocab terms. Um, I had this on the video as of yesterday, so if you're paying attention to that, I'll post that at some point today so you can kind of watch that if you need to. Um, did it work out okay? I know it was loud, but um, it was good, like quality-wise, you could see it. Okay, I used the new program and it looked a lot better than that first attempt I tried. Uh, but anyways, we, we, this is one of the photos that we had on that video. Um, this is an isosceles triangle. Uh, there's a couple things that give it away and that's the properties that we're gonna be talking about today. Well, on an isosceles triangle, um, the vocab words I want you to know from yesterday was the legs, right? The legs in an isosceles triangle are the two walls that are supposed to be equal to each other. So these walls are actually supposed to have little markers on them for an isosceles triangle. Um, now, the good, the kind of the cool part is the word leg came from when we did right triangles, right? Legs are the two walls that touch the nine degree marker. Well, you can have in an isosceles right triangle and the right angle would be here, so the legs are actually still the same label. They're actually the, just the two walls that would, uh, that would be touching. But again, isosceles triangles don't have to be right. Like in this particular case, that angle number one kind of looks like it's obtuse. Looks like it's definitely bigger than 90 degrees. Uh, but again, um, what makes it isosceles, two walls match. Okay? Uh, now, we do have a base. The base is the random third wall. Now, what I was discussing with you on that video yesterday was that the base can be really any size you want. Um, it could be smaller than the two legs, so it'd be kind of in more. Uh, this, in this case, the base is actually really incredibly long. Um, by knowing what the base is, like how big it is, it can actually tell you what the angle is. Um, that's kind of the weird thing. So we're gonna we're actually gonna look at one of the uh, the formulas later. I think it's the later sections where you know when I give you the wall lengths, there's actually just a simple formula that you can plug in and tell me what the angles are. Um, you know, are they are they right angles? Are they obtuse? Are they acute? There's a little simple check that we do, but that's coming up later. It's a later section. But again, the base in this particular picture is pretty large. Now, the other things we talked about were the angle names. Uh, they didn't, I didn't have them labeled in the picture. None of the pictures in your book had them labeled. The base angles are the two angles that touch the base, so they didn't get real creative here. But the base angles are these two. Okay. Now, if you're looking at the picture, what do those little bubbles mean in the corner? Yeah, they're equal angles. That's actually the first theorem that we had um, on that video. That was theorem 410. I'll put that up here, here in a little bit. Uh, but 410 said if you have an isosceles triangle where two walls match, the base angles have to be equal. So angle 2 and 3 have to be the same angle. So that's actually the first theorem that we looked at on that video, and I kind of walked you through this, the style of the group and how it works. I think, we, I, think I just did a flow chart, I think, for that one. Uh, but anyways, uh, those are the base angles, the two angles that touch the base, and then the, then that random other angle that's on the picture, the third angle, I guess, well in this case it's angle number one, uh, but the, the other angle, this is called the vertex. On an isosceles triangle, the vertex is the one angle that touches the two legs. So, uh, on a right triangle, the vertex would be the actual right angle itself. So, okay. Questions on any of the vocab words? Now again, the whole reason why I gave you that slide yesterday, like it was one of the first slides we had, was to review the vocab words that possibly you already knew, um, but to, to be very specific where they're at. I don't care if the picture's rotated or flipped or wherever it's at, the legs are the two walls that match, the vertex, the angle that's in between them, the base angles touch the random third wall, and the, the wall that's not equal to the other two. Okay, but let's get jump. Let's jump right into that first theorem that we have. Let me get all these markers here. Now, um, as of the video yesterday, you should have had this theorem, and hopefully, I don't know the timing wise. If you had enough time to write it down before I clicked to the next slide, but I'm going to put it back up here just in case you didn't see it. All right. So this is that that first theorem we had yesterday. It was called the isosceles triangle theorem. Right. The isosceles triangle theorem says that if two sides of a triangle are equal, they're congruent to each other, then the angles opposite of them are equal. Namely, what I mean by the opposite angles, this basically means the base angles. The base angles have to be equal to each other. 
So then uh, I'll, I'll show you the picture that I showed you on that slide I have. Uh, but again, if you're given the walls that are equal, then the angles are equal, the base angles. Okay, makes sense with 410? Now, this is actually the one theorem we needed to prove theorem 49. I'll put theorem 49 back up on the board today. I'll bring up the PowerPoint that we did. And we're actually going to prove it today using this one. Um, that if you know, you know, if the walls are equal, then the angles have to be the same, that type of thing. I know it seems weird, because if you think back to theorem 49, we didn't talk about isosceles in that picture. We were talking about right triangles. I'm going to show you what we can do with it. And it's kind of, it's kind of weird. Okay? All right, questions on this one, though? Okay, and again, uh, I know some people were gone yesterday, and I'm like, Mullins, you were gone. There's some others gone. I don't remember the list. This was gone. Caroline, I know you've been gone the last couple of days, so. Um, but Adam and stuff, so. We're actually missing quite a few. All right. Again, I'll put this online. Um, you know, these photos will be online today, and I'll have the video up from yesterday. Um, yesterday, because again, I was gone for those who were actually gone. I was gone yesterday, so. Okay, we're good with the theorem 410? Okay, um, I'm gonna put the picture up here and I just wanna discuss the picture before we move on to the next one. There, I know I'm taking my sweet time on these, but if we don't know these, it kinda makes it pointless to know the other ones. So like, we, it doesn't make sense like if you don't know what these mean. So we, we need these two to, to discuss those others. And then after we're done with this, uh, I wanna go back to theorem 49 and actually discuss this, like why this is actually useful. Okay, we good so far? All right, let's go to the picture here. Hopefully everyone's got the words. And again, I just pulled this directly out of your book. That's where the picture came from. So that was pretty, pretty easy to do. All right, uh, so let's go to the next, uh, the next picture here. Let's go to the next one. All right, that's cool. Do whatever you want. All right, uh, this is the picture that went with it. So, I know this seems a little weird that the picture is kind of upside down. It is an isosceles triangle. You can see that the two walls are matching. So, uh, what I want to prove here is that the, the angles are the same. So, what we talked about um, on, the, on the video um, is how to prove that angle 1 and 2 are the same. Because right now we don't know that. We just know that the walls are equal. So, uh, this is called a construction proof. It's when you can draw on the picture. You can add little things like add an extra wall. But I don't want to make it crazy specific. It, you can do little things where you can use like rulers, you can use protractors, simple tools that you can have in front of you. So the, how this theorem worked was that you, you draw an angle bisector from, from angle C. Okay, so you draw it like this. So that makes this angle the same. That's called an angle bisector. Um, how I know I can do that, I can put my protractor down on the actual, like, uh, on the actual triangle itself. I can measure the angle, you know, whatever angle C is. Let's say it's 90 degrees, I have no idea. Uh, and then you could draw a line that goes right through the middle of it. Because that's you can do that on a protractor. Um, in fact, we can actually do a construction that cuts angles in half. Um, I think how, you, how you're supposed to do that when you had an angle, you're supposed to draw an arc with your compass, then pick up the compass, and you place it right down on one of these two spots here or here. And then what you do is you make the arc out in the middle without even changing the compass size. You just made the arc original. You put it down here where the pokey end is here, the pencil's out here, you float it, you move it up to here, you float it, and then it goes right through the middle. So the two angles are equal. That was a construction we could do without even a protractor in our hand. So that's what I did here. I, I drew an angle bisector through point C. And again, we'll practice all these constructions at a later time. Um, but again, that makes these two angles the same. Now, I don't care where this point hit. I call that, I think on the video, I call it point P because um, I didn't really mind where that was. And now in both triangles, I have a side marker and an angle marker. Right? There's two marks in each picture. Now, I can't tell you what types of triangles those are. I just know that an angle's the same and a wall's the same. Now, is there any other markers on the picture that I can fill in? Uh, line PC. Yeah, it's the reflexive wall, right? I can fill in the wall PC. It's the one wall that both triangles share. So that's a side marker. So now by SAS postulate, the two triangles have to be the same. This triangle has to equal that one. 
because it spells the correct acronyms, right? We had four, you know, four acronyms we could use. This is one of them, and it proves the triangles are equal. Well, if the triangles are equal, then duh, the parts have to be the same. The remaining two angles have to be the same, including these two walls would have to be the same. So, and these angles would have to be the same. We could do a ton of stuff there. We'll come back to that. Okay, makes sense though, what I can do with that. But that was the whole point of how to prove one and two are the same. So just having the walls being equal, it forced the angles to be the same. Those are those two little triangles. Now, you're thinking, okay, war, fine, fine and dandy. But why, like, why did you bring this up? Like, what was the whole point of showing us this theorem other than just talking about, you know, the types of triangles? This actually proves theorem 4-9. So let me show you theorem 4-9 again. Let me pop that up here. Theorem 4-9. And we haven't actually proved this one yet. We talked about, you know, the hypotenuse and leg of right triangles are matching. Um, prove that the triangles are equal to each other. We haven't even done it. But this theorem, this theorem 4-9, actually uses the last one. It uses the isosceles triangle theorem. So here's how it works. Um, this is how they actually prove this one. And it's actually kind of difficult um, unless you've seen someone actually do it in front of you. So here's the trick. Um, you start with one of the triangles, so it doesn't matter which right triangle you have. So let's say I have you know, that right triangle, let's call that one ABC. Okay, so I'm going to draw it backwards, but you guys get the idea. So here's A, here's B, here's C. And they had a marker here, and they had a double marker there. All right, so there's that's the triangle ABC over there. I just flip-flopped it. Okay, um, how they do this is that they extended one of the walls, this wall, they extended it further, and what they did is they basically copied that triangle to here. They copied it over. So they, we can extend this wall. You could put a straight edge down. You could just draw this wall straight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop at some point when this wall is exactly the same length as Y to Z. I'm going to just stop it right there. So this would be, you know, this would be where Y would be sitting. This would be where Z is sitting, right? And so this wall here, I'm going to make a triple mark. That wall has to be equal to this wall. That's a construction. You can copy segments. You know, it's very easy with a compass to actually copy that. Now, what is this angle right here? A right angle. It's a right angle. Has to be, right? Has to be a right angle because the one next to it's a right angle. And then this wall is exactly the same height as this wall because they're already pre-marked. So this would be the same as having X up here. So X and A are like on the same spot. So by looking at this, this triangle that I have drawn right here is exactly that one. It's X, Y copied, but it's attached to ABC. Because again, how I know this is the exact same triangle as that one, I copied the bottom wall, so that's a side marker. I had the angle, which is the 90 degree angle, which that one had, and I had the side marker. So by SAS, this triangle right here is this one. So I, that means why, why I want to know that that is the same triangle, I can make the marker on it. I can now transfer that one marker over here. This is actually the same length, even though I didn't measure it. It has to be because the two triangles are equal. Okay, now let me get rid of all these markers here. Okay, so again, the, the Y is right here, the X is up here, and you know, Z is over here. Okay, so it makes sense. Now, why I brought this up? Because the whole point was to prove that these two triangles are equal. All I did so far was just attach them to each other. I didn't prove that they're equal yet. I just attached them. If you ignore the line in the middle, that one, like ignore it, what type of triangle is that? Isosceles. It's isosceles. You can see it. The two walls are actually marked. <coughs> so the two legs here are actually the same. Well, what we just said in the last theorem, the last theorem 410, the one I just had up here a little bit ago, if you have an isosceles triangle, what can you tell me about the base angles? They're equal. They're equal. The base angles have to be the same. So that means this angle over here has to equal that angle. 
They have to be the same angle. And now I can prove that the triangles are equal. Like the left triangle ABC is equal to XYZ. I can actually prove that because that's an angle marker, that's an angle marker, and that's a side marker. Or I could go the other way, angle, angle, and I could go side here. All right, so angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. And that's one of the four uh, acronyms that we have. You know, the, the four acronyms were these. These are the acronyms we had up until this point. And this was the new one that we talked about earlier this week. And that's the one that actually proves that the two triangles are equal. So do you see why I needed that, that theorem 410 now? Because without the isosceles triangle idea, I would never know that those two angles in the corners were, what is that, angle C and angle Z. I would never know that those are the same angle without seeing it as an isosceles triangle. So I just thought that was kind of a cool proof. Now, if I were to write out all the steps here, it's like seven, eight lines long. Because for every step where you do constructions where you're drawing things and like transferring markers from one picture to the other, you have to make lines in a proof. It's super long, I didn't want to do that to you. Okay. But we've now definitively proved that the hypotenuse light theorem actually does work. So if you have a right triangle, actually two right triangles, where the hypotenuse and the legs are actually marked, so hypotenuse, sorry, hypotenuse the long side, and one of the legs is marked, then the two triangles are equal. And again, but it has to be a right triangle for that to work. Okay? Alright, but let's get to uh, our next our next property here. Let me get rid of this picture we didn't need theorem four and nine anymore. Again, we had that one earlier this week, so well, that one made sense to you. Alright. So let's go to the next picture here. Okay. This is four eleven. We had this one yesterday. Um, I think this might have been one of the last slides that I had, was Theorem 411. I think it was one of the last. I didn't go very far into that, to that video. So this one was the converse. So if you don't know what a converse is to a theorem, uh, it's taking the same theorem we just did, but flip-flopping the words. So like on the last one, they talked about having the walls equal, then it forces the base angles to be the same. Well, in this one, they say that two angles are equal, then prove that the walls opposite of their, those angles are equal. So now we're proving the walls are equal, the sides are opposite sides. Now, instead of saying opposite sides, that's the same thing as proving that the legs are equal. So we're trying to prove the picture's isosceles. So given two angles in the corners, prove that you actually have an isosceles triangle. So it's a complete flip-flop. I'll give you the picture and we'll talk about it again. But again, this was on the video yesterday, but I do want to kind of refresh your memory because we're going to go into two new theorems today. And for those who were gone yesterday, these are the ones we talked about in the video. So. Okay, so two angles of match, prove the walls match. So I'm going to go back to a similar picture I showed you earlier. Um, let's see. So this is the picture that they're giving me. This is the picture I used for the slideshow. Okay, so I have a triangle, and we know that angle one and two are the same. We know that. Um, what I want to prove is that this picture has to be isosceles. Namely, what I'm trying to prove is that this wall equals that wall. That's what I'm going to try to show you. Now again, the proof is identical to the last one we just did. It's actually the exact same steps. That you're going to go up here to uh, angle E, we're going to create an angle bisector, Goes through it. So, because again, you can do your um, you can do your uh, your compass where you actually draw your R, put it on the points of contact here, and make your little X out in the middle, and then draw the line. But it cuts this angle in half. That's an angle bisector. So that angle over there is equal to the bottom angle. So in both pictures now, I have the two angle marked. Angle angle. I have an angle angle down here. And the thing that both pictures share, the top and bottom triangle. There is a triangle up here. There's a triangle. It's sure they're reflexible in the middle. That's a side marker. So it does spell one of the acronyms. So if it spells one of the acronyms, what can you tell me about the two triangles? Yeah. 
the top triangle has to be equal to the bottom one. So if this top triangle is equal to the bottom one, that forces these walls to be the same. Those are the, the matching, the visually matching parts for both pictures. And then the other thing I can ask, I can also go through is I can prove that these walls are the same. I can prove these angles are the same right here, this third angle. That would have to be the same. I could do all that stuff. But again, it just makes an angle bisector. It's a simple construction we've actually done before. I just we haven't reviewed it for a while. But again, the whole point was to prove that the walls are equal, and we can do that. But again, you had to know your acronym system. AAS. Okay, questions on 411. Same proof. It was almost the exact same steps. But instead of giving the walls for us, we were giving the angles. Okay. New properties today. This is corollary 4.3. In fact, I'm going to write the word corollary up here. This is corollary. Now, if you don't know what a corollary is, corollary 4.3. Corollary is a follow-up to a previous theorem. So at some point, one of the two theorems we were just talking about, theorem 410 or 411, one of them had something we needed to talk about. And they, they extended it one step further. And what they did is they took the properties and they applied it to equilateral and equiangular triangles. So if a triangle is equilateral, meaning the walls are all the same, you can prove that it's also equiangular. Now, we're not going to actually go through the entire proof. I'll just kind of give you a brief, what they call a, a, uh, an informal proof, a paragraph proof, where we just talked about it. I won't even do a flow chart. I'll just draw the picture. Now, yesterday, when I was going through that PowerPoint, like I was doing the actual video, I was writing down the steps, and I was doing other things, and doing a flow chart. But this one's going to be super, super informal. Okay, so what we're given here is we're given a random triangle that is equilateral. And I want to prove that it's equiangular as well. Now this proof, if you were to do it, it actually takes two actual individual proofs. Um, you have to prove one where you start with the triangle being equilateral where all the walls match, and you have to prove it's equiangular. And then you have to flip-flop it, and you have to start with the angles being equal, and then end up with the walls being the same. Because the reason why you have to do two proofs is because they use the word if and only if. That's called a biconditional, and they use the word if and only if. It's where you could flip-flop the sentence, and it would still be the same sentence, because they use the word if and only if. Okay, so here's how they prove it. Um, now, this is going to seem simple. Now, again, um, very informal. If you just want to watch, you can do that. Um, we're starting with a triangle, and I'm going to start with the simple fact that maybe just two walls are the same. Not all three walls, but just two walls. Okay, so this is an isosceles triangle, not equilateral yet. Well, what we just learned a little bit ago on theorem 410 was that if it's isosceles, what can you tell me about the base angles? Three. Yeah, so these angles are the same, right? You could do that. Well, but the thing is, what they're telling me is that I have an equilateral triangle. That means all three walls are the same. So instead of doing these two and proving the base angles are the same, what if I did these two walls? What if I did those two? It's still isosceles, just turn on the side. So again, according to theorem 410, the base angles are the same, right? Yeah. These are the base angles. That's the third wall that isn't marked. Well, it's still the same triangle I did earlier, because I said it's, it's equilateral. So if these two are equal and these two are equal, then all three angles are the same. Because all the walls match, so then all the angles match. They're actually the exact same angles. Because you know you can number these. One is equal to two, and we knew two is equal to three, so one is equal to three. All of them are the same angles. But again, it's doing the it's doing theorem 410 twice. Doing it once to prove the other base angles are the same, and then turning the picture sideways and doing it again. That's why it works. Now, going backwards, we can use theorem 411, where you know that the base angles start the same. Now, where we know it's equal angular, you start with the base angles, then you can say that the walls across from them, the legs, have to be the same. And then you can turn the picture sideways and do it again. So that's why it works. Okay, very informal proof. It was again, it's just doing theorem 410 twice. I don't think we need to walk through all those steps. Okay, questions, comments about it? 
Okay, now the next one, this is our um, one of our last properties today, if you're uh, corollary 4-4. Four, four. Now they get very specific. And I'm just talking about, okay, if you know if the walls match, the angles match, but what are the angles of an equilateral triangle? Well, on this one, this is corollary 4-4, four, four, okay? Um, these corollaries we've actually had before, you just didn't realize it. We've had them way, way, way back in chapter, I think it was chapter 3. But anyways, um, angles of an equilateral triangle measures to be 60 degrees. The angles have to be all 60s. So they can't be right angles, they can't be you know, other random angles. If you have equilateral, the angles have to be 60. Here's the, here's the idea, why this has to be 60. Because if, let's say we didn't know what these are. So let's say we just call these, you know, a variable, like x's. We know that they're all equal, all right? According to the last theorem we just did, they have to be all the same. What do triangles have to add up to be? 180, right? So you're going to add up the three x's, and you know that they have to make 180. That's a basic, I think it was like the first theorem we learned about in chapter 4 here. That triangles have to add up to be 180 degrees. Well, when you add up x's, you just add the numbers out front. So you get three x's. That's how you add variables, right? You add the numbers out front. And then to solve, you just divide this over by 3. So you divide by 3. So 180 divided by 3 is 60. And you can fill the 60 in all the x's. So duh, all the angles are 60s. That's just how you do it. So it's kind of common sense. So that, actually what you're looking at there, that's the algebraic proof of why it works. That's exactly the, the, the work that's required to show that. Pretty easy steps, right? But again, this is the reason why you can't call a right triangle equilateral is because of this theorem, or corollary, sorry. This corollary doesn't allow a right triangle to be equilateral because equilateral means all the angles have to be 60s, so not 90s. Okay, let's Okay, questions with any of the property you use? All right, perfect. Now, what I, what I picked out today is I picked out a couple examples out of your book that I'd like to cover. Some stuff that, you know, some examples of like how to use these properties, um, but just looking at a blank picture, what are things you could tell me from the picture itself? Maybe you could find certain variables, like certain x's. Maybe you can prove, um, you know, what the lengths of certain walls are, that type of thing. Um, I don't know if we'll get to um, the example, the specific example of a proof using all of this stuff today. Uh, or use a, about a bunch of different properties, but I want to do some examples today. So that's kind of my goal. We're going to do that for maybe the next five, ten minutes, something like that. So let's jump into one of the first examples today. But does everyone have these, though? Those are the two new ones. I didn't put those in the, the video yesterday. I thought the video was long enough. It was like 30 minutes or something like that yesterday. All right. This is one of our first, um, first pictures that I want to cover. Okay? Um, again, this is just a random example I pulled out of your book, and I want to know, when you look at this picture, what could you tell me? What's something that you know is true by looking at this picture? Mullins, what do you get? The base angles are equal. Okay, which ones are the base angles? The one on the bottom. Yeah, the ones on the bottom. These two angles are the same. She's absolutely correct. That is the only thing you could tell me. Okay? Um, I couldn't tell you anything about the walls. I couldn't do anything like that. Okay. You could do a reflexive wall, and we could do a whole proof and proving what certain angles are. Um, but, but you're absolutely right. According to one of our theorems, those two angles, angle A and angle C, have to be the same angle. Because that's that theorem 410. Right? Theorem 410, that's it. it's called the isosceles triangle. When you have two walls match, the angles have to match. Does that make sense? Now, again, if you went through the whole proof, you could prove, you know, the with a reflexive wall, you could prove that certain things match and certain angles have to be certain things, but we're going to eventually get to that. That's something I want to show you later. Okay, that was very good. Just looking at that picture, you knew instantly that certain angles had to be the same. Instantly. Okay? That's using your properties. Okay, let's do another one. So, same, same exact idea. I'm giving you a picture just I found in the book. And now there's two questions. They want to know what is your angle R and what is... The wall P to R. Because again, when they put two letters together like this without a marker, they actually want you to measure it. They want to know what the length of PR is. Okay? If it's even possible to find it. Okay? But let's find angle R first. Okay? So what can you tell me about this triangle as you look at the picture? It's isosceles, right? Two walls match. Okay? So if it's isosceles, that means certain angles have to be the same, right? So let's call these X's. 
Those two angles have to be the same. Now that's the vertex angle. That one can technically be a different angle. Um, but these two angles for sure have to be the same angle. So we're going to solve. So triangles have to add up to be 60, or have to add up to be 180. Okay, so that's, because just knowing that the two walls match, that means these two angles have to match. So I'm going to add these together, that's two x's. I'm going to subtract this across, making 120. Then divide by two, so my x's are 60s. Well, if those are 60s, then what can you tell me about the picture? Equilateral. It's equal, yeah, it's equilateral. So that means this third wall has to be what? Five centimeters. Five centimeters. So that's something like using all the properties. That was using the theorem 410. That was doing um, the exact idea of, of, of corollary 4, 3, and 4, 4. That you know that it, you know, if the walls are the same, or the angles have to be the same, and vice versa. That's what we did here. If the angles are the same, the walls have to be the same, then you could transfer the numbers across. And why you used four, corollary 4, 4 is because you knew there were 60s. So it had to be collateral. Okay, so. Let angle R, that was 60, and PR, that would be 5. So that would be the answer to those questions. But again, it's not hard, it's not difficult. It's just you do need to know your properties. You need to know how to set it up, how to start it. Like me showing like what the X's were, like proving it, that's steps that you would do in like homework, showing what the wall should be. Now, some people look at these and go, okay, we're fine. But like, what would homework look like? Because that that could look like a homework problem. They can give you a picture and ask you a series of questions about it. But I'm thinking, like, this is probably a more practical problem from your book that, that you'd see in the homework sections, other than those last two. I just pulled those randomly out of the pages. Um, this would be something more practical. They show you pictures, like, in this case, a bunch of different triangles. Um, we do have isosceles triangle on that picture, and they want you to find certain angles on the picture. Certain angles. Okay? Um, so to start this, they do want you to find like four different angles here. Okay, I'll, I'll help you find the first ones and then we'll talk about how to find those other ones. So the first angles I can find just without even looking at these over here, these angles have to be the same. The reason why, you have isosceles. So isosceles triangle, those two have to be the same. It's not even a right triangle, so it's just isosceles. So you could add up the two x's with the 92 and make 180. So you can subtract that across, that's like 88. You two x's, divide, and your x's are 44's. I did my math right. So these x's should be 44's in the corners. Now, why is that useful? You know what the one next to that 44 is, it's 180. Exactly. You know, now knowing that one of those angles is 44, I can find the one that I have my arrow pointed to because they have to add to make 180. So this angle would have to be like a 136 for that to add to be 180. And now you can find the other two, the ones in the far corners, because that's also an isosceles triangle and you can do that math. The only difference between the math would be doing something like this, but in 136 here now. Because these, you call these x's, because it's an isosceles triangle, and now you use the 136 instead. Okay, and then once you have all the angles figured out, you can go back to here and figure out which one. So C, A, D, C to A to D, that's the 44, that's this one. A, C, D, A to C to D, that's 44, okay? And then the other two are the ones we haven't found yet. Oh, I actually did A, C, B, I guess. A, C, B is 136. And then they want you to find A, B, C. That's that far one down there in that corner. A to B to C. That's that angle. B is the middle letter. Okay. And that would have to be about 22, something like that, for it to work. To add up to be 180. Okay. Questions, comments about, you know, the problems. Okay. That I when I look at that problem, that's definitely a homework type type of problem. You know, you're finding simple angles, it's not overly difficult, but you gotta know some simple stuff about what triangles add up to be. Common sense, you know, certain angles are the same using the properties we have. Okay, other ones that I saw in the book, like this. Find, find an X, find a Y on a picture. You know, you could plug them back in if you wanted to, um, that type of thing. So it looks like on this case, 
Um, that 4x minus 8, that's this angle here. It's that angle. This is a 4x minus 8. We have two walls marked. And, and here's the weird thing. If these two walls are marked, that means it's isosceles, right? Two walls marked. So we could set these two walls equal to 6y plus 3 or 8y minus 5. You can set those equal, solve for y, and you have y. But if those walls are the same, where are your base angles? D and E. So those two. Yeah, this triangle is equilateral. Because how I know that it's equilateral, these two angles were supposed to be the same. So if that's a 4x minus 8, this one's a 4x minus 8, and now they're all 4x minus 8s. So it's actually equilateral. So this wall over here is the same as these two. And you could, you know, to solve for x, you'd have to add these, or you could actually just set each of these angles equal to 60, I guess, separately. Or you could add them up to make 180. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of, it's very strange that they, that they give you those two, but it's supposed to tell you like it's equilateral just by seeing that. And then you can solve for x and y. Okay, questions, comments about any of the problems we've done today? Or talked about, I guess, we haven't really done any. Okay, you're done for the day. That's it. Very nice, very easy. I'll post a video later today of yesterday's lesson in case you were gone. If you watch the video, um, Monday you will definitely want some form of a textbook. We're gonna get homework on Monday. Um, I, I didn't know if we we're gonna get it today. I just didn't know if we we're gonna get there or not. I'll do a couple more examples of this stuff. Maybe I'll even come back to this problem. We'll finish up Monday. Um, but I have some other ones I picked out anyways. This I have a bunch of different slides we can go through. All right, there you go. All done for the day. Basically.